Have you ever wanted to automate your web browsing actions with Excel? Or maybe you want to scrape data from any website and bring that into Excel. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today with Selenium and Microsoft Excel, we're going to do just that. I'm going to show you how you can grab any data from a website such as this economic calendar, bring it into Excel to create this fantastic calendar. We're going to do all of that and a whole lot more with step by step coding. It's going to be a great training. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, thank you so much. I'm super excited to bring this training to you this week. It was highly requested. How to automate web browsing with Excel and Selenium. How to scrape websites or how to do just about anything using Excel and almost any websites. So we're gonna cover all of that step by step today. If you do like these trainings, I just ask a few things. Go ahead and click that subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and the notification icon bell. That's gonna get you alerted to these trainings as each and every Tuesday, I do bring you these comprehensive application developments and really cool things that we can do with Excel. And every single Saturday, I do the basic Excel VBA for those of you who are new to VBA or those of you who wanna brush up on your VBA skills. So I bring that to you. Don't forget to comment below, like the video. I respond to each and every comment. If you want to help this channel and you wanna contribute, there are so many great ways to do that one is with our patreon platform or youtube membership because each week i create an additional video an additional training and those trainings are always based on your recommendations so i'll be taking this template and i'll be updating it with additional features and additional things that make this incredible. In fact, I've got over 100 additional trainings and templates on those platforms. So make sure you join. It's just a few dollars a month and a great way to support the channel. There are downloads, there's VBA code books. We've got lots of features and benefits for you right there. So go ahead and check that out. I'll include the link down below for that. That's on Patreon or YouTube members. All right, let's get started on this training. So what is it that we want to do? Well, I want to use Selenium. If you have not heard of that, I will be going in detail on everything you need to know. So basically it's gonna allow us to automate things inside a website. So it's gonna open a browser, we can do search, we can click buttons, we can scrape data. So today we're gonna to be scraping this financial data, this table. I'm gonna show you how we can do that. If we wanna click certain buttons, we can do that as well. We're gonna bring that data into Excel. It's gonna go into this database. It's gonna go into this. We're gonna bring it all into here. And then we're gonna put it in this beautiful calendar. When we make a single click on any item inside this calendar, it's gonna take us to the individual event where we can see more details about that event, just as if we had clicked on any individual item here, just like that. So it's gonna be the same idea if we click on the link here. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So how do we do all that? Well, inherently Excel doesn't really have that in its VBA. So what we need is an additional software, additional help to do just that. And we can use something called Selenium or Selenium, however you want to pronounce it. And basically what Selenium is, it's an umbrella project, as I said, for a range of tools and libraries that enables support and automation of web browsers. So it works on any type of web browser, Chrome, and also it's got lots of coding for that. Now, if we take a look inside this, so this is the Selenium website, and I'm gonna include these links down below in the description so you can get to Selenium and everything. So basically it allows you to automate your web browsing. Now, if we take a look at the code, also a shout out to a Wise Owl. They had a great training on this, it helped me a lot. So we see that Java, Python, C Sharp, Ruby, JavaScript, Kotlin. So all those, but there's really no VBA, but somebody has done that for us. And so that can be found here on our GitHub. So basically what we want to do is we want Selenium Basic. Selenium Basic is actually the library that's actually going to work with VBA. So what we want to do is we want to get this download and we can find that over on GitHub here. So this is the information about Selenium and this is the different code and things you can do. So that's going to help us. But what we really want is Selenium Basic 2.9. Now this is the latest, you know, it hasn't been updated in, since 2016, but it'll work just fine. So what we want to do is we want to click on this XE code and what that's going to do is going to send to the download. So you're going to find it in your downloads. Once you have it in your downloads, once it finishes downloading, you can see it here, EXE. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this and it's going to go through the install. So let's take a quick look at this wizard here as we move forward. And what we can see is we'll just click on next. And then we have a license agreement so we can accept the agreement here. 
click next once again. Now in this field, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a lot, so I've already got it, so you'll probably see something like full installation. So you see it's got all the web drivers for all the browsers. But remember, this is a 2016, so this is 2004 at the time of this recording, so that's eight years ago. So I want a newer version of the web driver for Chrome. I'm gonna be using Chrome, so you can use any browser you want. I'm gonna use the compact installation. So really what I just want is the net core libraries, which is important, the templates and the examples. I'm going to get that Chrome driver, which is what I want, but I'm gonna get it from somewhere else. I'm gonna get a more updated version. That's kind of important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click next and then install, and then that's gonna install. I do have it installed already. So it'll install for you and just take a moment. And once it's installed, it says it's preparing to install on your computer. So it's installing. And once it's installed, what I'm going to do is I want to find the folder that it was added. So I'm going to do is I'm going to select on my windows here. I'm using for windows PC and we're going to go all the way to here. I'm going to look in for that selenium folder that just got installed, which is here selenium basic. And I'm just going to click the examples folder. And what that's going to do is just going to lead me to the folder in which it was installed, which is here. I'm just going to click this selenium. So this is where I want to see. Now notice my drivers already installed installed but now what we want is we want to get you the chrome driver in your folder you won't have this yet so what we want to do is we want to get that how do we get that well if we take a look inside the selenium here and we see downloads so we're going to click on the downloads here and we're going to go all the way down on this one and we're going to see that we have down here browsers and that's really what we want now you can use your browser of choice any which one you want i'll be using chrome and so you see here chrome now it's going to go to take our documentation it's going to lead us to this called chrome driver chromium and that's what i want to look at and it says we can view the implementation so it's got some information about that so what i really want is the latest chrome drivers that's what i want so i'm just going to take us here to the chrome testing driver and this is the link i'll include for you so i'll include this link here now i want to know what chrome version i'm using so i'm going to select on my settings here and i'm going to go to the help and we see that the information i'm going to use let's see i'm going to go about google chrome sorry it was off the screen let me just bring that over i want to make sure you see it all so here right and then help and then about google chrome so i want you to see that there great so once we see that we see that i'm using version 123 that's the main version i'm using so that's really the one that we're going to be focused on so knowing that and we go back in to here chrome for testing we're going to look for the stable version we see here stable 123 so that's really what i want to use so i'm going to select on here and i'm going to find out which version i want i'm looking for the chrome driver i'm using windows and i'm using windows 64 so this is the one that i want the chrome driver and it's the winzip so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to highlight this in my browser i'm going to right click and i'm just going to click go to and what that's going to do is going to automatically download that chrome driver inside my downloads folder so here inside my downloads folder i've got the chrome driver it is zip file so what we want to do is we want to unzip that so i'm just simply going to extract all here and then i'm just going to extract it right in my downloads folder and then click ok so here we have the chrome driver so now here's the license and the exe so i've got the exe and if we remember correctly we've got the file where we want it inside there so what i want to do is you can copy and paste or you can drag and drop either one so this chrome driver belongs inside the main selenium folder or whatever driver you said so basically i'm just going to take this and drag it here it's already in my folder so i don't need to move it but that's what you want to do because that's going to set up to make sure that you have the driver inside there for vba basic so if you want to use more than one browser you just add more than one so no problem there so we've got the driver we've got everything set up that we need so we can close out these folders here and then we can go into excel back inside excel i'm just going to open up a new workbook as you would be opening up so i'm just going to click new here any way you want to get to the new workbook and i want to make sure that this library is installed here so I'm going to go inside the developers tab. If you don't have the developers tab open, you can click customize the ribbon when you right click and just make sure the developer is selected there. Inside that developer, I'm gonna click on the visual basic. Alt F11 is a shortcut there. And I'm gonna go into this sheet here. Let's just take a look. We have nothing here. And I wanna go in to here which is our object browser and we're not going to see any type of library just yet so if we look here we see nothing here i'm looking for selenium so what you want to do is you want to go into the tools references here and this is a very very important part and what we want to do is now mine is right here but yours is going to be probably down here alphabetically right around here we want to look for something called selenium type library and you want to make sure you select it clicking okay once it is selected it does become available inside your libraries right so that means you know you've got all the features for selenium available here and we can look down and we can see all the features we can search for anything so let's say i want to search for get or something like that and that's going to tell us what we have so all of this 
finding elements, which we're going to be going over get so we can do get and we can look down here and we can see it's selenium code driver get a URL, which we're going to be doing timing out raising. So we see that we have the selenium library installed and that's really important because nothing will work unless you have this selenium library. Once again, it's tools references locate and select the selenium type library make sure you do that all right very good so now that we've got that covered let's move into just something very very basic so we can see how this works and then what we're going to do is we'll get into this project let's close this book and i'm going to open up on our project here which is our web scraping project i'm going to open up a brand new module here so we can start working in this i'm going to close this library here and also we can close book one i just wanted to show you an empty workbook so we don't need that book so we're going to focus on this workbook but what we're going to do is we're going to start coding from scratch right here and the first thing we want to do is we want to write our macro name so let's put get economic events we'll do events now once we have that i want to dimension a variable so we're going to use a variable for our chrome so i'm going to dimension chrome as the selenium we'll type in selenium now remember if your library isn't present you won't find this what type is it well we have many types we want to choose a chrome driver so that's it so we're going to dimension the chrome as a chrome driver now relatively what we really need to do is just simply set it as a new chrome driver so set chrome is equal to new chrome driver so that's going to create a new instance of our browser so what we want to do is we want to start it up so we did see it chrome dot start and that's just going to start it up so let's see what that does let's run it and just see exactly what happens so we're going to hit play on that or f5 and what that's going to do is it open it up and it closed it right away so we saw it so one of the reasons it closed right away is because once it ended here it closed it right so what we want to do is we want to keep that open here so to do that we need to change this to up here so outside of the browser because once it exits the browser it's gone so we make it active for the entire module and of course we can make this private or public we can leave it dim for now so let's just try it now so we're going to open it up here and it was so quick you probably didn't see it so our browser's open here i'll drag it down here inside here and we can see so perfect our browser opened and nothing's happening which is fine but that's working just fine okay so now what we want to do now that we've started our browser we really want to go to a website so let's do that so we're going to do chrome dot get something you just saw a moment ago and what is it that we want we see we have some options here we have a url as string a timeout as long and it minus one raise as balloon true so we're just going to focus on the url we'll do url colon equals and then what is the url so the url that i'm going to be working on is this one right here called inching and i want to focus on this calendar so investing.com economic calendar so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to go back into the vba and i'm just going to paste that in there so basically what i wanted to do is i wanted to mention the chrome as slim chrome driver we want to let it know it's going to be a new chrome driver we're going to start that browser and then we're going to go to this website so let's run that right now and we're going to see just how that happens it opens up a new instance of the browser and it goes directly there and so that's exactly what i want so it's working just fine and this is an exit intent so we don't need to worry about that so everything's working fine but now what i really want to do is i want to focus on some event this we don't need to know that this is something that we want to do so now we want to focus on something i want to grab some information or i want to do something something on this website and i want to automate that process and in essence what i really want to do is i want to grab the information from this table but i don't know anything about it how do i know well we can use f12 or we can right click and we can inspect the element let's scroll up here so we can see that we can click inspect and that's going to really help us it's going to tell us more information so i really want to look on this table this is the information that i want on this page so anywhere inside what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click let's raise it up a little bit here so you can see it and i'm going to click inspect and what that's going to do it's going to launch it might be on the right or bottom for you but we're going to inspect a specific element that we want we're going to go into the elements it's going to be automatic and it's going to give us some information about the element so what i'm looking for is i want to download this entire table now just like in excel we have table rows we have table data and we have tables so we see here each one of these as we move our cursor over it it highlights on the left you see how we do in that these are individual table rows and when we open one of them up then it's going to get into the individual data within that individual columns so we see how as i move over each data it goes over so we can see which element we're focusing on so it's kind of nice but really what i want to focus on is the entire table here you see this table this is really what all the data i want remember we want something called economic calendar data so we see the name there's different information we have an id we have a class 
we have information. So we know we're on the table because one, it says table, because that's important. Two, we see that it's highlighted the entire, let me scroll up a little bit. We see that the entire table is highlighted. So that's kind of important. We know we've got the right table there. Now, what we want to do is we want to look for this specific table. We want to tell VBA, please find this table. And we can use a few different items, but I think this ID is good. ID is always good because it's unique. So what I want to do is I'm going to copy this. I want to tell Excel, look for this table. So how do we do that back in VBA? Well, inside VBA, what we need to do is we need to dimension a variable for that table. So we're going to do something like dimension financial table as selenium dot web element that's the type of element we want to focus on sometimes we have elements so this is a web element now once it is loaded we want to set that so i want to set that financial table how do we do that well here what we're going to do we're going to do the set financial table is going to be equal to we know chrome's our browser right and i want to look for something i want to look for the table so how do we find that table we can do something called find by. So it's gonna look for it by a class, by ID. Remember we said it was the ID. Just take a quick look back in here. Remember, it's the ID that I'm looking for. Class, we have another one. Sometimes we'll use the name here. So table's the name, ID, but I'm gonna use economic calendar, which is the ID. That's what I want. So I'm gonna use find by ID. So let's go back here, dot find. I'm gonna scroll down here by ID. Now, what is the ID? I'm gonna put that in quotes and paste it in here. So that is our table. It's gonna set that table. So perfect. So we are gonna be able to find that table by the specific ID. And so how do we know? Let's take a quick look and make sure that it has been found. And I'm just gonna put a stop here because I wanna make sure to see that we've found that table and it's inside this variable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this code here and I want to make sure that it grabs it it's going to go into here website it's going to look for that table it's going to load it first now that it's done finding we're going to take a look back inside our visual basic here and we're going to go into the code it's stop which is what I want I want to stop it and we're going to look inside the locals now if you want to know where the locals all you need to do is just click view locals window that's what I want to take a look at and we see we've got here financial data we see that we've got all the information is displayed is enabled so we've got the information in here so here is good so it's selected present so we know that it's there available perfect that's exactly what we want very good now what do we want to do with this data well I really want to get it into Excel so how do we do that well first of all let's dimension the worksheet so I'm going to dimension the worksheet as a worksheet that's what we want to do and let's set that worksheet where do I want to put it in well, let's take a look inside our workbook here and I want to put it in this worksheet called scraped data in fact let me just make sure all the columns are just kind of normal and not size because I want to show you that part too okay so we'll just put the columns back at a normal width so I want to put it in this worksheet called scraped data so let's set that worksheet to scraped data so here we go set our worksheet is going to be equal to this workbook dot sheets and which one are we going to use we're going to use that scraped data and if you want to make sure you get the name right all you need to do is just double click on here in the sheet control a control c to make sure we get the name right we're going to go back into that and then use quotation marks and the scrape data. Okay, so we now we've set the worksheet. Now, in its simplest terms, what you can do to get that data into Excel is relatively simple, although we're going to go beyond that. So we're gonna do financial table dot, and we see we have different options here. And so what we want to do is set as a table. And then what we want to do is to Excel. So we're gonna take the information to Excel. And where in Excel do we want to go? Well, we have it worksheet dot range. I'll just put it in A1. So that's really all we need to do. So let's take a quick look at that and see if we get the data. It's not going to be in the format we want. It's not going to have the right information, but at least we understand how to quickly get the data into Excel. So I'm going to run this macro. It's going to go into the browser. It's going to load. And once it's done loading, we're going to take a look back inside here. And we're going to take a look in here. And we see that we have pretty much the data in here. Now, it's going to take a lot more of the formatting, but that's a quick and dirty way to get all the data in here. So great. So we understand at least we know that this table is holding all the data and we're able to get it into Excel. Very good. However, if we take a look at the data, we need to work a lot with it. Eventually, I want to bring this data into this events database. Now, this events database is going to have the event name, the currency, the impact, the date, the time, the actual, the forecast right previous, a link. I want a link 
And so there's a lot of information I really want. I don't just want this data, right? So we see the impact, there's nothing here. So let's take a quick look back on the website here. If we take a look at, we see the impact here, it's just three stars. So it's like an icon, but I really need something in more of a text format because I can't just bring these icons. So we have the currency, we have 37 minutes. That's not really going to help us, right? I really need a time. So 37 minutes, I need a time like this. This is already formatted in time, which is good, but I'm gonna need to work with this. This one's not gonna work. This is just a single day. So I need to account for that. I need the impact. I also want the date in a column, right? Now, where's the date? If we take a look back inside the website, we have the date here. So I want that date in another column. So we're gonna have to do some work with it. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can loop through all of the rows and all of the columns, and we can work on the data and get that in just in the right place that we want to. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and dimension some new variables. We've got worksheet and what we got the table, which is good, but we need some more web elements. I wanna focus on some rows and a single row. So we're gonna dimension here table rows as now since it's more than one we're going to use selenium and then we're going to use dot web elements so this is elements so there's more than one table rows it's more of a collection so we need to focus on that so those are the table rows now when we focus on each individual table row it's going to be a single web element so table row as selenium here dot web element so that's a single element next up after we have the table rows i want to focus on some of the individual items within each row we need to focus on individual so first we're focused on all the rows then we go to the individual row but then inside in each individual row as we see here we have individual elements within each row so we need to call those out too and dimension those variables so dimension the row items as and since there's more than one selenium, then we're gonna use dot web elements. So it's a web element since there's more than one, it's a collection of them. Now, what we wanna do is I want a single cell item. We're gonna call this cell item. So that's one single item within the row items. Cell item as a selenium. And as you can imagine, this is called the web elements, a single element, so web element. All right, great. So I also wanna focus on a few other variables that we're gonna be needing. To mention, I wanna know a date string. That's gonna help us as a string. And then we also want an event date. To mention the event date. Now that event date is right here. So I want to capture that event date and see how we work with that. So let's continue on. That event date, we'll do that as a date. I wanna make sure that's in the right format. And I also want the event time, event time as a date too. So those variables are going to help. Now we are going to actually go through the sheet. So I want to keep track of what row number we're on the sheet. So as we bring the data into our sheet, we're going to mention the sheet row number as long and the column number. So we're going to do the sheet column number as long and also we want to know the minutes we saw there were some minutes here so i want to capture those minutes what this means is in 33 minutes this event is going to happen or in 48 minutes that's why there's some minutes but basically that doesn't really help us i really need to know what time is it not just the number of minutes so in 47 so you see how it changed right so this is always updating which is nice but i really want the time so we have to pull that information so let's do that so we'll do minutes as long very good so we've got the information that's all the variables that we're going to need right now now what we want to do is we see that we can get this information in but we really need to work with it before it comes into excel so we're not going to use that right now so we can clear it out so the first thing what i want to do is i want to clear any information that might be in here as we work through this data here i want to clear this information out we don't need it before we bring any information so this scraped data is like a temporary holding place once we get it just in the format that we want then i'm going to bring it into the events database but i'm going to look up inside this events database does it exist if it exists update it if it doesn't add it to the first row so what we want to do is i want to make sure this sheet is like a temporary holding spot i'm going to clear everything out first so to do that we can do work sheet dot used range dot clear so that's going to clear or clear contents or clear the formats we'll just do clear the contents. so that's going to clear all the contents any contents that might be there already so that's kind of nice next up what i want to do is i want to get that date i really want that date if we look inside our data there's no date i want the date in a column that's important eventual as we add it to our calendar i want to make sure that there's a date column but there is no date column in our data so what i want to do is i want to add that but let's put that into a variable meaning i want to take this date right here and i want to put it into a variable how do we get this date 
Again, we're going to inspect this element, right click, and that's going to lead us to this date right here. We can highlight over it here and we can see that as we move over here, it is right here. So we can see it. It's called calendar data here floating. When we drop into it, we see that we have the date. So we see a column span. We see a class called the day. We see an ID, the day. The ID might not be unique. We see the name of it here. So this could be very interesting. So what I want to do is I want to get information on that particular day. So we want to find an element. And how are we going to do that? We can use the class. It's called the day. So what I want to do is I want to find the element. I'm going to look at something called the class. Find an element by class. And I'm looking for the day. And once I get it, what I want to do is I want to return the information from it. So how do we get that? Well, I want to use the text. So this is the text. It's called Wednesday, March 27th. So that's what I'm looking for. And we're going to put that into variable. So let's do that right now. Let's write that. We have it called date string. I'm going to use the date string is going to be equal to Chrome dot. And then what we want to do is we want to find by find by what find by class. Remember, we just saw it here. And what is that class? The class is called the day, T-H-E, the day. That's what I'm looking for. So we can, of course, copy that or retype it. So we want to find by class and we're looking for the day. Once we find it, what do I want to do? I want to extract the text from it. So we're going to type in text. Great. So let's make sure that we have that message box date string. I just want to make sure that we can capture. Actually, we can do debug dot print and then date string. So it's going to put it directly inside our immediate window. So what we do is we're going to run this macro and make sure that it captured the date properly. Once it's completed, what we're going to do, bring this down here and we see that Wednesday, March 27, it captured the date and it put it inside the immediate window. So we see that the date string is perfect. Great. So I want to convert this to an actual date. Now there's a feature called C date. We can use C date. C date will convert it to a real date. So if I try to put this in Excel, Excel's not going to see this as a date because of the day. I tried it before a few times. In other words, Excel will see this as a date, but when you add the day, it won't recognize it as a date. If I remove the day, it will recognize it perfectly. So first thing we want to do is remove the day from it. So let's do that. Let's remove the day because we won't see it. We're going to update that. The date string is going to be equal. We're going to use the mid function on that. And what am I looking for? I'm looking inside our date string and I want to make sure that it's going to look for something. What's it going to look for? The space, probably the first space. So to do that, we're going to use the in string command. So comma in string. And I'm going to be looking at again, the date string. And what I want to find, I want to find that first space. And inside that first space, I'm going to add one. The reason we were adding one is because we don't want to include the space. So this right here is going to basically remove the day. You're using the mid function. I'm looking for the space. I'm adding one. We could use the right, but the mid's quicker. This is basically going to remove everything before the space, including the space. That's why we're adding one because we want it to include the space. So it's going to give us that midpoint, everything here. That's very, very important because once we have that, we can then use this date and we can create a date field that Excel will recognize. So how do we do that? We're going to do the event date is equal to C date. That's going to convert a string to an actual date. And what is it? The date string. So again, remember we have a string variable here, but we have a date variable here and I really want to get it into a date variable and using C date, we can do just that. Very good. It's very, very important that Excel recognizes this as a date. Perfect. And once we have that, what we want to do is I'm going to put that into Excel just to make sure that Excel recognizes it as a date because it's important as we're going to put it on our calendar. So we can do something like worksheet dot range just for temporary a one dot value equals event date. So we're going to put that directly and now I'm going to run this code here. It's going to launch that browser and it takes a moment. This website takes a moment to load. Now we can close the browser out and we're going to get VBA to close that browser in a moment. We'll get to that step. We're going to take a look inside our workbook here. We see a date here and I just want to make sure, I mean, it looks correct, but the best way for me to check is I convert it to general and I want to make sure it converts to a number. Now I know that Excel sees this as a date. Perfect. So we know we've got the right date, the right format, and that's always helpful. Good. Let's continue on. So we have that date. We're going to put that in a column. Now we can get rid of this. That was just for a check to make sure that we have the correct format. So we have 
all of the data inside this financial table. But what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to parse that data and we want to look through it and we want to extract information from it. But it's a lot of information inside there. So what I want to do is I want to start extracting the rows from that. If we take a look inside here, we've got our table here. So what I want to do, remember, we're inside the entire table here. This is the table ID here. I'm inside the entire table. I want to go through just the rows. I want to separate the rows from the table. So how can we do that? If we see, if we highlight over each individual one, here's one row, here's another one. What separates, what unique identifier for each individual row? We can close this out. I don't need that here. So we see something called TR. So this is called a tag. We see that we have a bracket there, TR. So that's called a tag. So that tag is for every single row. So what I want to do is I want to define our table rows by the TR tag, table row, TR. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside that entire table and we're going to set each individual row or all the rows as a collection of table rows based on this tag TR because each individual row is different. So really what I want to do is I want the same thing TR. So let's do that right now. So what we're going to do is we have the table rows here. So we're going to set our table rows is equal to inside where financial data. So this is our table inside here. Oops, fine table. Now what we want to do is I want to look for something. I want to find an element by tag where right? we're looking for tag, right? Because that's the one. So find element by tag. Now, what is the tag that I'm specifically looking for? It is TR. So that's going to define all rows within the table. So once I have all the rows, then I can loop through those individual rows and start extracting some data. And that's exactly what we're going to do. How are we going to do that? We're going to use for every single table row, which is a web element inside this collection of elements. We're now going to be able to loop through all the individual rows. So we can do something like for each table row in table rows and then close our loop. Next table row. Great. So this is going to allow us to loop through every single row inside the table. I also want to keep track of the sheet row. As we move through, I want to keep track of what row we're on inside the sheet. So to do that, I want to keep running counts so that we know exactly where to place our data. Not only that, we're going to also keep track of the columns. So here, what we're going to do is I'm going to set the sheet row number is equal to whatever it is. So we're going to increment it as it moves with sheet row number plus one increment sheet row number. So we have that. It's going to keep track of that. Now, what I would like to do is I would like a loop, but I want to make sure that we focus on the row items. So we need to set the row items. The row items are the individual items within a given row. So set the row items is equal to the table row dot. We're looking for an element. Find element by. What are we looking for? I'm going to look for a tag. Why am I going to look for a tag? Let's take a look at that inside here. We see that we have each individual row, but inside each individual row, we have the individual table data as we move and hover over it. And that tag is TD. TD is the tag that's going to let us know exactly what data is in every given row. So the tag that we're looking for is TD. So tag TD. So once we've set our rows, we then want to loop through the individual row item cells inside that individual row item. So how do we do that? For each cell item in row items and then close our loop. So next cell item. So this is going to loop through the individual items within the row items, just so we know what we're doing. Once we're inside an individual row, it's going to loop through everything that has TD, anything with the TD tag, it's going to loop through that and look for that. And what do we need to return? I want to return whatever the text is. Now the text inside this is 2.9 that we see here. Well, let's drop this down here and open this up so we can see the individual information. So we look here and we're looking here. So this is the previous. So we see that this one is 2.9. Here, the span title here 2.9 so if we drop this down here we see that it's got a link here and this one's called spanish 
H-I-C-P-Y-O-Y or year on year. So we're going to extract this information from every given data. It's a data point inside the table. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to loop through every cell item inside the row items. This time we're going to focus on columns. So now our sheet column number is equal to our sheet column number plus one. So we're going to increment column numbers. And the reason our variables always start at zero. So this one starts on zero, this one starts on zero. So that's why I'm adding one before we even add any data because it's got to start out on one. So inherently they start on zero. Okay, as long as they're dimensioned inside the macro. So our row is going to start off on row one here. Our columns can start off on column one. So that's going to help us keep track. Very good. So let's add the data. We're going to have to work with it a lot more, but we can at least get the data inside our worksheet. So how are we going to do that? The work sheet dot cells we know the row number so we're going to just put the sheet row number comma sheet column number dot value is equal to what we want to get the information from it so it is simply cell item dot text our item text basically what we're going to do is we're going to extract the text the text is going to be the spanish or whatever so we're basically calling out the individual data items and we're going to return the individual text on a per item basis so let's take a look at that so it's not the title but basically it's going to pull in that text here so not on this one we're going to work with this column so we need to work with that to pull in something other than that in fact i'm going to pull in the title but this one we're going to pull in the text all right great so let's take a look at see how that is going to work so let's go ahead and run the macro here and we're going to let it do its work it's going to open up the browser going to take a little bit to load the data you can scroll down to take a look at it quick bug to fix here find elements okay so it should be elements right we want to find more than one elements so it should be find elements by tag so that's important and also the same thing here set row items to collection so we want elements there's more than one item so we want to find the elements so let's continue on with the code here and see how it's going to work great let's take a look at the table here so we see we have information here but it's all over the place so what we need to do is we need to reset that column after the new row we need to reset that column so let's do that right now reset the column to zero on a brand new row so we're going to do just that inside the code let's pull up the code here and what we want to do is reset that column number back to zero for every new row so all we need to do is just do sheet column number equals zero so for every single cell inside the row we're going to loop through that we're going to be increasing the column numbers but once we reach a brand new row we are going to reset that column number to zero okay great so let's go ahead and run that it's going to open up that website here and we're going to grab the data again very good now we can see that the data is automatically being added as it's being done we're going to turn off application screen updating and then we're going to turn it on before the macro and that's going to make things a lot faster so it doesn't go one by one but we can see the data being added very good let's that finish up so we're going to do that we need to add in some headers here i'd like that we also need to add in some information this first column is blank so we can work on that but we at least are getting our data in here but it's going to take some work to get it all right let's continue on first thing we want to do is make it a little bit faster and go ahead and add our header rows so how do we add those header rows let's take a look back in our website and i want to define this is what i'm looking at the time the currency the impact the event the actual so i want to focus really on these header rows so we're going to and we're going to inspect those here and it's going to take us up to here so this is our second right but i want to look just a little bit above that there and focus on this one right here so if we take a look inside this called the head and i'm going to bring this down a little bit and take a look individually at that let's put this in here inside the table row here looking for the header so we see that here's our information that we really want here we have the time we have the impact we have the act so this is the information that i want to extract now how do i know where this information is again let's take a look at the tag here th is the tag so if it's a th tag i really also want to extract that too not just the td but the th so how do we differentiate between that so let's write that in to get those headers in so we're going to open up our code here i'm going to just put in application dot screen updating equals false and before the macro ends 
we're going to have to turn it back on application dot screen updating equals true so we got that now what we want to do is we want to focus on those headers if they're inside the headers then i want to do something a little bit different i want to call out those headers but what i want to do is i want to set these row items to the headers but only for the first row so we're going to do if the sheet row number equals one on the first row then what we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to set the row items equal to the table row dot find elements and there's more than one element right so we're looking for all the header rows so it's going to be find elements in this case make sure that i get it right find elements by tag so here we're looking for elements all the way down here by tag okay so once we have those elements by tag we need to put in that tag so that tag is going to be that t8 so we're looking for that table header inside that so we're either setting it to td if it's not row one if it is row one we're going to set the row items based on those elements by th okay so let's go ahead and run that code and take a look at what we have it's going to launch that browser it's going to take a look inside that table and we'll take a look back in our table very good so now we take a look here let's go all the way over here so now we see we've got our data here we have our time our currency so it's put our headers in the way we like it and you see we've got our information in although we generally don't need these two rows we'll probably delete those i don't need those additional rows so let's do that let's delete rows two and three that's a good start and we need to also add a date column i need to have the date column here so let's continue working with this to get this data in a format that we want so back inside the code here at the end before we turn back on application we are going to do work sheet dot range rows two through three and then what we're going to do is tie row dot delete so delete two rows next up what else would i like well i would like to also have the url as we see we've got some data in here let's take a look back in here you see that there's a name here the event name but it's also a url attached to that if i click it it's going to take us to that url so the url is embedded inside that name and that's what i want to extract so if we highlight over here and we see that we have here inside an individual row if we take a look at one item here we see that we have this event here click to view on more spanish we have something called a href equals and that is the link that i want it is that link that i want to extract and if we take a look directly we see that there's a tag of a then the href then the equals the link so that's going to help us extract that now where do we want to put it and first of all it's coming from the fourth column we have one column time we have then our currency we have got the impact and then in the fourth column we have the event so that's exactly where i want to extract it from and where do i want to put it i'm going to put it probably in column h here so we have our information just some header rows here i'm going to put it in column h so that's where i'm going to put that url so let's write that code right now so for each individual sell items i only want it for one single particular column column four so if our sheet column number equals four and i also want to make sure that it's not the first three rows if we remember correctly our real data starts on row four so i want to make sure that the row number sheet row number is greater than three only then are we going to attempt to do that so then we are going to let's write the then in there and then write the end if so if that's the case we're going to do work sheet that's our worksheet dot range column h is where we want to put it what is the row number the row number is the sheet row number dot value so what does it equal we're going to extract that information that we want it's going to come directly from our cell item and i'm looking for something i want to find an element we're looking for a tag find element by tag what tag are we looking for i'm looking for this a tag right here because this is very exclusive only for those links so the a tag is going to help us so we're going to extract that so let's look for that a tag and what is it that i want to extract i want to extract some attribute so we can do attribute now attribute some principle or property of that item which one is it it's the href so it's that's the one i want to extract now if for some reason there's no link 
or anything to there, it could create an error. So I'm gonna wrap it in on air resume next and then on air go to zero. I also wanna make things a little bit quicker. I don't want this waiting. So right before the start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add do events. It's gonna make things a little bit quicker as it doesn't necessarily need to wait for this to load completely for it to start moving forward. So let's go ahead and run that code and take a look at those links. So it's gonna load that browser up. It's gonna take a moment to complete loading. Let's take a look here. I've stopped the code here as it gone through and I wanna take a look. So make sure we got the right attribute. So we have the right information. So let's tab through so we can kind of see what's going on here. And I'm gonna bring this down here to close these out for now so we've got a little more space and i'm just going to use f8 through the code so we can kind of watch this go on so we see in column h let's go through the code as we loop through and we can see our actual then our forecast here is going through then our previous and if we take a look it's our previous so now we're on column number seven and let's take a quick look here so now all of a sudden it's going to loop again next cell item sheet column number now we're increasing it now we're number eight again we're adding the information in so basically at column number eight it's going to disappear right because there's nothing here anymore cell item text what is the value of this we don't need to add anything more right column number eight this is manual so if we take a look inside here we see equals column so we know that this is column seven and this is column eight right this is just a percentage format so by eight we're done so i don't want it to continue after eight i wanted to exit the loop so that this stays right we don't want this to move in other words our data is done we've added it everything else that we're going to do is manual in these columns so i want to exit out of this so let's do that because we don't want it to overwritten so watch what happens if we use f8 it's going to disappear you see it just replaced this with nothing so we want to get out of that so we know let's do this if sheet column number equals eight then we're done we can go to the next row then go to next row all we need to do down here is write in next row and then a colon so it's going to basically skip it okay so let's continue on and see how that works so let's use f8 one more time as we loop through we see the link for the next line is there perfect now we continue to column numbers five as we move through that using f8 we see the data is coming directly in here perfect now our sheet column number is eight we're just going to skip to the next row that's what we want we don't want it overwritten now inside the next row it's going to add the information in and continue on and that's exactly what we want perfect except we see that we now have the next row so we want to make sure the sheet column is zero we want to reset that sheet column that's got to be down here so that we can reset that column number back to zero we see that we have it let's continue on just run it one more time as we continue on now it's resetting at zero is exactly what we want back to zero perfect we've got our link in the right place as it moves through it's going to add in the actual it's going to add in the forecast the previous it's going to maintain that link and it's going to go to the next one right here and start adding in our new data which is here the time perfect so i like the way that's looking now sometimes we got to stop because we see it's adding additional columns that we don't need to so we can exit after the seventh column we're done so continue on and let this complete perfect now we can add of course our url header up here so that's fine other than this row in which we didn't reset but that's not going to happen again because we didn't reset the column number no problem great so we've got the url now it's time for the date and i'll put this in we might as well do it now url in column h i want the date in column i so let's take a look at that let's add that in here so after we delete our rows why don't we add in work sheet dot range h1 this is just for our personal dot value equals and then just put url very good and i also like to have the date the event date we can call it whatever we want so i'm just going to copy this and that's going to go inside i1 we're going to put that in here so in i1 we're going to put our event date and that's going to go inside j also one other thing while i'm at it i want a unique id and i'm going to put that inside column k so column k is going to take on a unique id i want something very unique so that i can track this and why is that important it's important because when i update that database here the events database i want to know if i've added it already i want some unique id in order to differentiate to know if it's been added already maybe i want to update some information 
information. So I need a unique ID that's very separate. I'm going to look for that unique ID. And if it has not been added yet, then I'll add a new line. If it has, maybe I want to update one of these numbers here. So if it's already been added, I will update it. So that's going to help us so that unique ID. And I'm going to put that in the last column. Very good. So we have that there. So we've got our URL, our date, and our unique ID. So the next up is that date. So we're going to add the date in right now, and that's going to go into column I. So when do we want to add it? Well, we want to add it when we're at the last column. How do we know when we're at the last column? Well, when it's column eight, then we know. So she column eight, why don't we do this? We can add it in here. So instead of go to next row right away, let's add the date and then it's at an end if. So when it's eight, we're going to add in a few more, the date, and then we'll add in a unique ID here. And we'll do that. So let's write that in right now before we go to the next row. So to do that, we simply write in our work sheet dot range and we're going to put that date in column i and of course our sheet row number dot value is going to equal what it's going to equal that date value we've already have that date inside that if we have already set it up and it's called event date and that's what we want to do so we're going to add that a set event date once we set the event date, I also want to add a unique ID inside column K while I'm at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it down here and we're just going to add in column K. So K is going to take on that unique ID. Sorry, column J, not K. So column J is going to take on that unique ID. Now inside that, how do we know what's unique? Well, I know this event name is relatively unique and probably the date. So that means the date that's in column I and the name, if we combine those, I believe that would be pretty unique because there's only one event name on that given day. They're kind of different. So we can use both the name and the date to create a unique ID. So the name, we can extract that from column D. So we can start there. So the name is gonna come directly from D. So I can just copy this here equals and then change it to d so that's one part of the unique id i'm going to use the and and then i'm going to separate it by an underscore and i want to use the event date and the event date however the event date is in a date format something like let's say 1 15 so we see it's going to be something like this not quite that format i really don't want it in this format i want it in the number format i want it in this format here which is uh, general let's undo that so how do i get that in we can use e date equals e date and we can use it in vba so really i want that original number so if we take a look at e date oops e date is going to be we forgot one argument so we need to make sure to add in the months it's going to be zero month on that so this is exactly what i want i want the four five just that original number there combined with the name so i want to use e date so we can use that inside the date here I'm going to use application actually i can just use worksheet function dot e date here and then event date and then don't forget the zero so that's exactly what i want perfect so we take in the e date i'm going to create just that number combined with that so the combination of the name plus the date in numerical format is going to create our unique id and we're going to put that inside column j and i want to make sure that this should be efg h <laughs> got the names wrong okay so h is going to take on that url i and then j okay perfect now we got that right so everything's looking good there so we've got a unique idea which is really going to help us moving forward let's go ahead and run the macro and see where we're at let's take a look at how we did i'm just going to highlight these and double click the columns here so we can see where we're at we've got the event date that looks good we have our unique ID, which looks really good. So this is nice. This is what I want to have in that unique ID. So our data is looking quite good here. What I would also like, notice that there's nothing in the impact. We have to work on that. We also have to work on the time. So we see that some things are minutes. So I can't have that. I can't have minute and we need to do the impact. So let's do the impact first. In the impact, I need some text. So if we take a look inside here, let's pull this up again. The impact here, it's either one star, two stars, or three stars, right? So I really need something other than that. I can't use the icon. I have to use something else. It's low volatility. This is uh, also, if we highlight over it, we see that this is moderate. And then I think there's some high down here, but I don't see, oh, here, this one's high. So we've got really three options. If we hover, we see high volatility. So that's actually what I want in. I want to show low volatility, moderate volatility, or high volatility inside the data so how do we extract that well again let's take a look let's inspect the element here and it's going to pull it up so we see that we have it's called sentiment and it's also called impact and we see we have a title of moderate volatility so really what i'd like to do is i'd like to extract 
that title. That's what I want. So let's do that. If it's column number three, let's extract the title of it. So how do we do that? Well, let's write it in here. We're gonna write an if then as we loop through these here, we're adding the sheet columns. If it's column numbers eight, we're gonna do something. What if it's column number three? If we can do sheet column number equals three, then do something else. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here. So we're doing this instead here. If it's column number three, I don't wanna just add the text because it's nothing. So we need to add in something a little bit different if it is column number three. So how are we going to write that in? So again, we're gonna write in this value here. This is where it's going. But what is it that we're writing in? We're writing in equals. We can get to extract some information. Again, we're gonna look inside the cell item, cell item, dot this time we're going to take the attribute of something and what is it the attribute of it is the title attribute so we're going to extract that title directly from there so it's going to pull in directly the title because that's exactly what i want if we take a look inside here one more time we take a look inside the sentiment here or the impact whichever one it's called again inspecting it we can see directly that the title here if we add it over here bringing it down title low volatility expected so the title attribute is what i want to extract very good so let's take a look at that and see how that works so again i'm going to run the code here and we're going to pull it up so it's going to clear everything out very good it's loaded in and now we double click here perfect that's exactly what i want so we've got the impact already we don't need to add a header the header's not here it's missing but that's okay and the reason it's missing is because basically i've cleared it out so if it's column number three now obviously we could probably add a little bit more if it's column number three and sheet row number is greater than three, so that's fine. We could do that. Well, not for the header row. We want to exclude the header row so that the impact's not gone. Let's continue on. So now I want to focus on the time here. So that's very important. It looks like that Excel is treating these as a time, which is important. Remember, if we want to double check, we go to the general and we want to make sure it's a decimal perfect. So they're treated as time perfectly, except for when it contains minutes. So that's it. I noticed there was one. I don't think so. In my test, I noticed something said all day i noticed there was an all day event so i thought that we have to account for that too i saw one thing and one minute so minutes basically means certain minutes from now so let's take a look back in our sample and take a look at what we're extracting it from as we see this is six minutes six minutes 16 minutes so that means six minutes from now and keep that in mind that this is also on our gmt minus four currently i'm located in vietnam i am at gmt plus seven so there's an 11 hour difference so i have to make sure that i account for that 11 hour difference so basically what i want to do here i want to take the five minutes and i really want to remove the space and remove the min and i want to take the current time and i want to add five minutes to it and then I want to deduct 11 hours, right? So by deducting 11 hours, it'll keep consistent with all of these times. So again, I want to remove the space. I want to remove the MIN. I want to take the five. I want to add the five minutes to the current date and time. Then I want to subtract 11 hours. So I want to get that time that's the same as consistent with these. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, this is only on column number one. So we want to focus on that. And I want to check to see if it contains minutes. So here's where we're going to focus. So all other columns now if it's all other columns i want to add in something we can add in the data first that's fine if sheet column number equals one and sheet row number greater than three then i want to check for something i want to check if what if it contains minutes or all day right so it could be both i noticed that both if since we've already added we can check here or we can check here so i'm going to check here if the sheet column text equals all day then i want to do something then here we can set this to just zero which is going to be 12 a.m that's fine then equals zero so that's in case it's all day but what if it contains minutes so how do we check that i'm going to use the in string command if in string cell item dot text contains what we can do space and minutes or just minutes either one minutes is greater than zero that means that text contains minutes and we need to do something about that so then what are we going to do in that case i need to update this value here our worksheet cell with only the actual time here's where we're making the update what's it going to equal basically we need to remove the number of minutes so let's do that let's add in a variable since we have it i don't want to make it too confusing let's extract the minutes first so minutes we have a long variable on that equals i want to extract it how do we do that we can replace our cell 
item dot text i'm going to replace what am i looking for i'm looking for space m i n i'm looking for that what am i going to replace it with i'm replacing with nothing extract number of minutes to long variable that's exactly what i want so once i have the number of minutes again all i want to do is add it to the current time and then deduct the number of hours so let's do that i'm going to write in the current time of course which is my current time zone gmt plus seven i'm going to add in the number of minutes that we want to add on so we're going to write in time serial and then we need to know the number of hours that we're adding on so i'm not going to add in any hours but i do want to add in some minutes here so we're going to write in minutes that's our variable and no seconds perfect so that's going to get us the current time but i really want of course in the time zone where it's located gmt minus four so we need to subtract 11 hours minus time serial once again this time hours no minutes and no seconds turn minutes into we want gmt minus four time that's what we want i want the gmt because that's exactly what everything is in here current gmt minus four so that will be consistent with the data and so we need that great so let's take a look at that let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks and if we take a look at the data while it's working on i just want to show you the number of minutes so we have times of five uh, and then two minutes then 52 minutes 52 minutes so it'll be 502 and then 552 you know so that's the times all the way up and then till six so we get an idea of what the times should look like because we want to convert it so that's a great way let's take a quick look and see how that's working well let me refresh this browser so we can get the accurate number of minutes because it's a little bit old data so we see that we've got one minute 50 minutes 50 minutes so that's correct now let's take a look at the data and we have 510 6 559 15 okay that looks pretty good it's pretty close to what exactly what i want because everything's really to be 50 minutes away so it's now 509 yeah i think that's exactly what we want take a look at our data once again if it's 509 there and 50 minutes is 559 right so the data here is 559 perfect so good it's looking really good we've got the time we've got the currency correct we've got the impact the volatility the headers don't necessarily matter too much because i'm going to bring in so we've got our data exactly where we want it everything's looking pretty good now what i want to do is i want to run through this data we've got it all set we finished the macro everything's the way you want there's one other thing that we could add notice that if you want to auto fit your data so if it's like set here and you want to auto fit your data we can do this with the last line of code to automatically fit so we can do something like work sheet dot range a all the way through j entire column dot auto fit so that's when that'll automatically fit basically it's duplicating this action right here so we just double click on here like this it's duplicating that action so we can see all of the data it's kind of a nice feature very good so now that we have all of the data what i would like to do is i'd like to loop through all of the data here and i've got this macro written to make things go a little quicker and what i'm going to do is i'm going to look for a unique id if it is found inside here then i want to do it. oh there's one more thing that i want to do to clean this thing up i just want to close the browser right so to do that we can do chrome dot and then we can just do close so that's going to close the browser it's going to kind of helpful so that's the last thing we've extracted all the data we've updated it i like the way that things are looking we can clean this up a little bit get rid of the extra spaces make sure of course you do download this template if you do like these templates i've got 300 of my best templates on sale now so make sure you check that out the link down below that gives you 300 incredible templates for a very low price it also includes an incredible library so you can quickly get to any workbook you want just by clicking on it or you can click on the video a single click on that will get you to the video so that's a great way to enhance your skills and build templates by yourself very very quickly all right let's continue on so now that we've got this i want to show you a macro that we're going to be able to use that's automatically going to import this data inside this i'll be going over this macro so basically what i want to do inside our events database is i've created a named range let's go over the named range so we see that we have the unique ids i want to get this data inside our economic calendar events all right so let's go into the formulas name manager and we're going to pull up our event so i've got something called event id and that's basically it's one that gets added it for every new event we get a brand new one so it's numerical very easily but i've also got something called event unique id now unique id is unique to that individual event and it's something that we can create so that's what we created so when i 
import our brand new scrape data inside, then I'll clear this out. I'm gonna look inside that named range, that unique ID. If it's found, I'm gonna grab the row and I'm gonna update everything. In case anything changes, I wanna update everything except for the unique ID. So if it isn't found, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom of the list and I'm gonna add it down here. So add a new row. So we need a macro to do just that. So we can save a little bit of time. I'll go over that macro inside the module here. We've got event macros and I've got one that says add or update event data. So let's go ahead and go over that. We're gonna focus on that scrape data sheet. We have got some variables, the last row, the data row, the event database row, and the event ID is long, and a unique ID is a string. This is the unique ID, this is the event ID, so keep that in mind when we get the confused. So the first thing we're gonna do is determine the last row. We need to loop through all the rows. So I'm gonna determine the last row of our scraped data. So to do that, we're gonna determine the last row based on that scraped data, it's gonna be A. If the last row is less than two, that means we have no data and we can exit the sub. We're gonna loop through all the data. So I'm gonna start in row two and I'm gonna go all the way to the last row running a loop. I wanna extract that data. Let's bring these a little bit smaller so we can see all the data. I wanna extract that unique ID directly from column J and put that into a string variable right here. I wanna find it. Remember, I've got that named range called event unique ID. Just to remind you again, cause it was kind of quick, name manager, event unique ID tabbing, we can see the dancing ants around this unique ID. I'm gonna look in that named range. I wanna see if it's found. So to do that, we're gonna use the find command. And if it's not found, it could create an error. So we're gonna wrap it in on or resume next and on error go to zero. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look for that unique ID using the find command. I'm looking in the named range. I'm gonna look in the values and whole, and I wanna extract the row. If it's found, it's gonna put that row inside this long variable, and we can run a check for it. If the event database row is equal to zero, that means it was not found. It's a brand new event item. If it's a new event item, I need to do just a few things. I need to add in a brand new unique event ID. Now that unique event ID, we can use a single cell to get that, or we can create one automatically. So we can use the max function to create that. We need to create a brand new one. If we were to do it in inside the, let's see, inside, I can just do it here. If we were to do it inside VBA, we can use the max or within a cell. So for example, something like this here, let's just pull an empty cell up, equals the max of what number? We'll just call it event ID plus one. So that's gonna get us, that's what it looks like inside. So the next available unique ID is 152. If we look, make sure they're all numbers. They all have to be numbers. So if we look and we go all the way down, we see the last one is 151. We can do the same thing in Excel VBA using the max formula. And if there's an error, there'd be no data. So we do need to capture the error possibly. So that's why we're gonna wrap it in on error, resume next, and on error, go to zero. That event ID, we're gonna use the application or just worksheet function is fine. We're gonna use the max as we just did. We're gonna use the max of what? The range event ID inside the events database. And we're gonna use plus one. I want the next available, next available event ID. Now, remember, if there's no data at all, it will create an error unless we wrap it in on and resume next. So we can check for that error. If for some reason the event ID is zero, it would be if there's no data at all, then we're just simply going to set the first event ID to one. Then we just need to do two things for the brand new. A is going to take on that event ID, column A, and column J is going to take on that unique ID. So we can do those two things inside VBA, excuse me, K. Column K is going to take on that unique ID. So that's the only thing we need to do for new events. Everything else, regardless if it is new or existing, is going to get. So basically, then all we're doing is we're going to take whatever's located in our scrape data here, and we're simply going to update the database. For example, inside column B, our event name is going to be taken directly from column D here in the event. So basically, we're just going to map each individual and bring it over. It's relatively simple through all these lines of code. Now, this is what it looks like when there's no mapped data. There probably could have been, but it's fine. So we're simply taking from our scrape data and bringing it into our database. And we're resetting the event database row to zero. Should probably reset the event ID to zero too, just in case event ID equals zero. Just to reset that, anytime we use find or max or something like that, just in case, although that should be necessary. So now what we have is we wanna to go to the next. So let's simply loop through that and we add all of it. And then the used range of our scrape data, I wanna clear the contents. In other words, once I've 
updated all the events database i simply want to clear the database so how would that look if i run that macro you probably won't see much of a difference because it's going to update it's going to loop through all of the data and then it's going to make an update so it's running right now and we can make things a little bit quicker by adding application screen updating true or false so let's go ahead and do that the macros run the scrape data is already gone here and our events database has been updated with any new information or any new rows we can check to see if there's any new rows no new rows have been added so it's been updated perfect so that's exactly what i want to happen right we didn't have any we just updated some individual files because i've already downloaded the data but everything's been cleared out now what we're going to do just to make things a little bit quicker we want to make sure after any exit subs here we're going to do an application dot screen updating equals false and then turn it back to true now we want to make sure there's no exit subs before we actually turn on so application dot screen updating equals true very very good i like the way that that's looking now once we have it inside our database what i want to do is i want to create this calendar so we've gone over something similar to this so we're not going to build this calendar today because it's very simple and i've got a training exactly where we create this from scratch this particular training is really focused on web scraping and we're almost out of time but i want to go over how we created this so the best thing to do is i've got a very specific day that we're going to be loading and i'm also going to be adding a lot more features in the patreon update i'll be adding ways to filter currencies we can all actually already do that filter the currencies if you don't want to see certain currencies we can just select here and i'm going to be able to filter impacts and of course i'll be taking your idea so i've got a lot of ideas for the patreon update so make sure you do get inside that with the other members and also what i want to do is i want to be able to add specific events so add today's events or add yesterday's events now how would we do that for everything we've done we've just added our current date so today's day but what if i want to add yesterday's or what if i want to add tomorrow's how would i do that well what we can do is we can actually have it click a button so let's take a look at this i'm going to inspect this element here and we see that there's a specific name on this this is called time frame yesterday we see that we have inside here information floating we've got a state anchor here so we got some information located that but i really want to focus on this yesterday button right here so we've got a link it's got a job it's got an id time frame yesterday so i like this unique id so we can actually tell excel to click a button so how would we do that let's go ahead and go back into our original here and i'm going to call this scraping macro so now once we have that so what i want to do is i want to show you how you could do that so not this one here this one here we've loaded up the sheet here once we've set the worksheet we've loaded it up and what i'd like to do is right after we load the table i would like to click a button for that so how can we do that we're going to focus on the chrome then we want to focus on a find element it's a single element by what is it let's take a quick look and see what kind of element we are looking for we are looking for an id called time frame yesterday so i'm going to just click on here and then we can copy this just to make sure that we've got it exactly right that's what we want to click when we click yesterday what's going to happen it's going to reload the data and it's going to show different data for that day so that's exactly what i want to do inside the browser so let's take a look at that time frame we've got to find the element find element by id here's the id and what's the name of it it's going to be called time frame yesterday and what do i want to do i just want to click it so i want to click that button so now let's take a quick look now what we're going to do is we're going to run this macro and we're going to load up data so it's going to open it up it's going to take a moment to load let's get rid of that and we want to see it click that button so we see that it clicked yesterday here it is it clicked yesterday automatically and it's going to load yesterday's data in here which is exactly what i want perfect the browser closed just as we wanted we're going to pull up we've got our scrape data from yesterday very very nice perfect so what i would like to do is i would also like to do that for tomorrow right so if we see here inside there we can also do the same thing for tomorrow so if i right click and i inspect that element and we look for the id we see that this has got a called id time frame tomorrow very nice but what i would like to do is i want to give the user the ability to have either one of these things today tomorrow or yesterday so i want to give them three options so i'm going to copy this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into the code here and then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to look for this one here dates during the day so scrolling up here right after this as we've clicked the button i'm going to do the same thing so i'm just going to copy that temporarily and i'm going to copy this here 
and I'm gonna paste this in here, time frame, just so I can get it exactly right. So time, oops, copy it all, time frame tomorrow, change this. Obviously, we're not gonna click all three of those. We're gonna either do today, yesterday, or tomorrow, right? So it's one of the options. So what I wanna do is I wanna differentiate when a user clicks, let's take a quick look back inside our application here. I've got three different buttons here, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if they click yesterday, obviously I wanna add yesterday's today, and tomorrow but how do i differentiate well what i've done if i look inside here our selection pane and we select any individual button here and we scroll down i've given that button a name this button here's the icon and here's the button both of them have the same name called yesterday today's icon has today's events and let's take a look at tomorrow tomorrow also has the icon or name tomorrow and it also has the button name so tomorrow so that's the button that's going to click it so what i can do is i can add some information into that i need to know if the user clicked yesterday how do we know that if application.caller that's the name of the button that called the macro equals yesterday then click the yesterday button or obviously it's not going to be both if the application caller equals tomorrow then click tomorrow's button and if neither of those then it will just stay on today so it's pretty cool so we can do yesterday just based on the name of the button we can run the same macro but it's going to load different data based on the name of the button so tomorrow today or yesterday and today is just default we don't have to click any buttons because this will automatically load up automatically on current day so it's kind of cool that we can do that so let's test it out so what we're going to do is we're going to assign this macro to the button so let's take a look inside this so get economic events this macro will be tied to all three buttons so here all i need to do is just right click all three buttons and the icons assign macro and paste that in there get economic events so now what i want to do also a few other things once we get the economic events i want to do a few more things before i turn on application after i close the browser i want to run the macro that's going to add an update so once i scrape the data i want to update our data so we want to run this macro here so we're going to add that in here i also need to update the schedule so the calendar here we need to update that calendar refresh I'm going to copy that and what we're going to do is we're going to run that macro right inside here so we're going to do this so here we're going to update database and refresh calendar very good so now let's go ahead and click tomorrow we can close this now we're going to click tomorrow and see all of that happen so it's going to launch the browser scroll up so you guys can see what's going on here today is selected selected tomorrow automatically and it's going to download the data for tomorrow all right very cool our data has been updated here and now let's take a look so how do we create this cool calendar well the idea is we have a single day on this calendar that day is stored in a cell so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unhide cells a and b so we have the selected day right here 325 now that's in a format if i stretch it out we see it's in a long format and the reason it's in a long format like that is because i want it displayed here so this equals the selected day now that selected day is the same thing here it's a named range called selected day so that means that whatever we have here is going to show up inside this text box i've got some buttons that are going to go over the previous day the next day and today and we can refresh it simply by clicking the refresh button so that's it now the appointment i this is not really going to be helpful this is kind of old so we can disregard that <laughs> All right, we will be using that. It's going to be probably the event ID, but they're not really using that too much in this training. I probably will in the update. So just keep that in mind, B5. So now what I want to do is I want to know only those events that are associated with a given day. So inside this events database here, we need to run an advanced filter based on that day. So that's going to be that criteria. Here we have it based on the selected day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an advanced filter. I want all of the results to come into here. Also, what I would like to do is I noticed that there's a lot of events. If we take a look in the original data, we've got a lot of events for the same currency on the same time. So we see here like Brazil has 7.30, you see. So what I would like to do is if they're all at the same time in the morning, I kind of want to put them a little bit different. So I, in other words, I don't want them on top of each other. So I want them separated a little bit like this because there's often a lot of events at the same time. Look, all three of these start at 1 a.m. for Japan. So if we click on this, we see it's a 1 a.m. So to do that, we need a little bit of a separation on that. And of course, we want to be able to click the link. So how are we going to do that? So we need an instance. I need to know that there's three different 
different events happening for the Japan currency at 1 a.m and so that we can separate them a little bit so that's what we're going to call it an instance number so I want to know the instance how many instances very important and so I'm going to have all the results come here then I'm going to use a formula to determine how many instances so here's a perfect example Japan here we see that we have an event ID we see that we have the time now this is in time format which is fine but we see it's all the same so what I want to know is I want to know how many are at this time so how do we do that we can use the count if so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many of this currency are at this time now as we drag this formula down the range grows so now I'm looking for this currency and I'm looking in this time and I'm looking in the range all the way above that so from this point to the above as we drag this formula down it basically it looks everything above and it counts the number so I know that Japan has three instances here's the three three events at this given exact same time so to do that if I know that I'm going to be able to separate when I run through the macro this one's going to go in the original spot this one's the second instance so it needs to be moved over a little bit to the right this one's the third instance it needs to be moved over a little bit to the right okay so keep that in mind now this notice this is Japan but this is at a different time so it's not the same time we could see just keep in mind that if we were to format those we could show the time I think it's probably better if I do that right we can do the time and we see that that's formatted in time so we see that this is a different time and these are all the same time so that's going to help me position them so that they're not on top of each other so let's take a look inside that macro and that's called the calendar macros so I'll go through these variables as we go along first we're going to turn off application screen updating and I need to clear all the existing events right if I refresh this screen all the events need to be refreshed so each one has a name called calendar event and then we have the event ID so that's going to help keep them unique so every single one's going to be clear so to do that we've got a shape variable called event shape and we're going to look inside this sheet calendar shapes we're going to use the in string command and we're going to look inside the name of the shape anything that contains calendar event meaning greater than zero meaning that string exists in the name of the shape we're going to delete it so we're simply going to run a loop and do that for every sheet I also want to clear the contents of the currencies now keep that in mind that if I only want to show a few currencies I can do that I simply just unselect here and I can show a few currencies so what I want to do is I want to run through the loop and I want to know which currencies are selected so if I just want to show a few currencies and I, I'm thinking for the update I would like to show like there's a lot of things going on with the US dollar what I would like to do is like maybe show a different rows or something I've got some ideas I'm not sure exactly but there's just too much in one small area here so when I refresh the calendar here now there's less currencies you see how there's less so it's only going to look for those that are selected so how do we know if it's checked we're looking for a specific character now what character are we looking for if we insert a symbol I'm going to look for a very specific character called wingdings it's 254 so I'm looking for character code 254 I'm going to loop through all the currencies if it is 254 then show it but the first thing what I want to do is just clear all the existing currencies from column D so we're going to do that so clearing all the existing currencies right here we're going to set the calendar row as to six because that's the first row where the currency is going to go into and I want to loop through all of the currency rows starting at five going all the way to 35. So that's exactly what we're going to do for the currency row 5 to 35. We're going to look in the admin in column L. If it's character 254, then we're going to show it. D and the calendar row is going to equal whatever's in the admin. So basically, we're just adding the currency name here, whatever's in M. That's the currency name here, taking that currency name and placing it directly inside column D. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set that currency symbol. Nice spelling, Randy. Okay, setting that currency symbol or currency abbreviation, it's not really a symbol abbreviation here setting that and we're also incrementing the calendar row so that currencies aren't added on top of each other once all the currencies are done we're ready to focus on our events now we're ready to run that advanced filter here getting those results and placing them in here so to do that we're going to determine the last row of data to make sure that we do have data the last row a and excel up the last row of data if it's less than four that means we have no we're going to go all the way down here to exit the macro and we're going to go right here and turn on application screen update if we do have data i want to get some information from it after i run my advanced filter determining that we have data a through k making sure that we encompass all of the data a through k our criteria is m2 through m3 and our results are going to go to p all the way through x so that's our advanced filter we're going to copy that filter 
our criteria range is M2 through M3, and our results are P2 through X. So our results are gonna come here. I need to determine the last row of the results. I'm gonna use column P. P is an event ID, it's required. So we're gonna use column P to determine the last row. So our last results row is based on column P. If our last results are less than three, that means we have no data and we can go to exit the macro. If we do have data, I wanna bring down that instance formula. So what I did is I took that instance formula. I should probably clear it out, but I wanna take that instance formula from whatever's located in Y. I've copied and I've pasted in Y. I'm just gonna bring it down for all the data. So to do that, we're gonna do this. Y3 through Y last row, the formula equals whatever's the formula in Y1. Bring down the instance formula. Now what I'm going to do is I also need to know the schedule start time. This is fully dynamic, meaning we can start at whatever time we want. It's based on the admin screen. and the admin screen, we have a scheduled start time. So we started it at 1 a.m. So it's set for 1 a.m. and this is the name range called start time. Now we also have another one called duration. Keep that in mind, duration is every 30 minutes. So our schedule is gonna be every 30 minutes minutes based on plus the duration. So that's how we built it. So we're simply increasing the duration. So that means if the duration changes, everything changes. It's relatively simple on that. So what I want to do is I want to put those into variables. So to do that, we're going to set our Schedule start, this is of course a date named range, so called schedule start, that's a double, sorry. Schedule start is a double because it's a time. It's not a date, it's a time. I'm putting a double in this case because I wanna do some math with it. So that's why I've got it as a double and not as a time. Both would probably work. So the duration is also a double. I wanna know the duration, very important, schedule duration. And now what I want to have is we're gonna run the loop. For the result row equals three to the last result row, meaning I'm gonna loop through all of the results, starting in row three, all the way to the last row, I need to extract some information. So I want the event ID, and that's gonna come from column P. I also want the event name, that's gonna come from column Q, the currency in R, date is gonna come from P, excuse me, the date is going to come from, not P, no, 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 no. We don't need the date, we have the date. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. The date is not necessary because everything's the same date. No need for that at all. The impact is very important. The impact is gonna come directly from here. Now, each individual one, we can set the colors on impact. We can set them to green or whatever we want. So if I decide I wanna change it to maybe a lighter green, I can do that for low volatility. When I refresh the calendar, it's gonna to change to that lighter green. So we see it's a lighter green. We can change them to any color. It's important to know what row it's on. Is it on row 15, 16, or 17 based on the impact? If I know that, then I can extract the color. So I can make this darker red if I want to and just go to calendar. When I refresh it, it's gonna take that darker red for those ones that are high volatility. So as we see here, we move the shape here. So like I said, this overlap is a bit much. I think I'm gonna, like if there is more than one, I'm going to add some additional rows for that, something like that. But I wanted to be able to fit in a lot of currencies. So I need to extract the color from column C and whatever row it's been found on. So that's why it's very important to extract that impact. I also wanna know the event time. That event time is gonna come from column T. So we're extracting that time. It doesn't matter the format. This format is fine. We don't necessarily need it in the time format. And the actual, I wanna know the actual, the forecast and the previous. So those are all information. And I want to know the instance. The instance is gonna come from column Y. So now what we wanna do is I want to find that row of the impact, very important. So I've got a named range called, let's see, what's it called? It's been a long training. Let's see, what is that called? Probably impact formulas, name manager. And then we can see that we have here impact type. So I'm gonna look inside that impact types name range and I wanna determine what row it's been found on. So we can see here the impact row is based on the admin screen, the impact types here. I'm looking for the impact and I wanna extract the row. If it's not found, it could create an error, so we wrapped it. If the impact row is not zero, I wanna extract the color from column C, the interior color of that cell in whatever row, otherwise we're gonna set the impact color to nothing. I also wanna know the event row. What is the event row? It shouldn't be event, it should be currency row. I called it event row, but the variable's currency row, but I guess these are individual events, but I should call them currency rows. I'm gonna update that variable because I don't really like that. If you wanna make a quick update, very, very simple. Just highlight over it, control F. Every instance of event row, I wanna replace, including the dimension statement, I wanna replace it to C-U-R-R, currency event row and replace them all. So that's fine, 10 of different replace, 
So very good. There you go. So now what we want to do is we want to know here the currency event row. I want to look for the event currency, right? So I want to look for that. We've already enabled the event currency. So I want to look for that. I want to look inside here. If it is found, I want to determine the row. Maybe it's found on row eight. So I'm looking for those individual currencies. And so to do that, we're looking inside that column. And of course, again, anytime we use the find, if it's not found, it could create an error. So we're wrapping it again, error checking, doing that. If the current event is zero, it means it wasn't found. Maybe it wasn't found because we did decided not to add it in, which is fine. We're simply going to skip it. So to skip it, we're simply going to the next event. So we're skipping it. Next event's going to drop it down here. If it is found, what I'm going to do I've, now I know the row it's going to be on I know what row but I don't know what column how do I know what column well if it starts at 4 a.m and I know the starting time is 1 a.m if I subtract 4 a.m minus 1 a.m I'm going to get let's say three hours but if I know that the duration is 30 minutes I know that it's going to be roughly six columns so we're going to do just that so the event column is the event time minus the start time divided by the scheduled duration we're adding five why are we adding five because our first one starts on row five so again if our event time is 1 a.m and our schedule start time is 1 a.m this is going to be zero divided by this is going to be zero it's going to be five However, if our start time is 1.30, 1.30 minus 1 a.m., of course, is going to be 30 minutes. If I define 30 minutes divided by our duration, our duration, of course, is 30 minutes. We take a look in here. We see that our duration is 30. If I make that division, we're going to get one. So the one divided by one is one. If we do that and we add five, we're going to get column six. So we know that 130 is going to go on column six, which is column F. So we understand how we're getting the column. I want to make sure it doesn't go over column 52. So if it does, for some, we're going to go over that. I want to know what the event text is. I want to get some text in from here. What do I want? I want the time. Let's bring this down here. I want the name of the event. I want the actual, if any, I want the forecast and I want the previous. So some have some. So if we go to the previous day, I think that will have more information on it. I don't have any data. I got data on the 25th. So, okay. So some of them have data. So some of them, this one's got all the data here. So we want the actual, the forecast and the previous. So we want all that information inside the card. So we can do that right inside here. So the event text, I want to make sure the time is formatted correctly. So we're going to use the format and the event time. I'm going to give it this format and I want a colon and a space and then I want the event name as we can see then I want a new line then I want actual and the actual forecast text and the actual forecast previous and of course the previous variable which is going to hold that value so it's going to hold all that so we have that inside a string variable called event text then what we're going to do is I'm going to use a sample shape that I've got right here all the way up here just on the end if we take a look at this this is our sample shape called sample event shape I'm going to duplicate this one here this never gets deleted it gets put off to the side so it doesn't get deleted and what I want to do is I want to duplicate that so calendar sample event shape duplicate and give it a unique name calendar and the event ID. Of course, we've extracted the event ID from here. Now we're going to focus just on that. Now we know the left position is already going to be based on the calendar, the current row, and the event column in the left. Plus, I want to add the instance. I know the instance, remember, the instance could be one, two, three, or four. If the instance is one, meaning it's our first instance, I'm going to do one minus one. That's going to be zero. I'm going to multiply zero times 20. That means we're not adding anything. However, if it's the second instance, two minus one is one times 20 is 20 pixels. So we're adding 20 pixels. So that's how we get something like, let's scroll back over here. That's how we get something like this, all three. So the first instance gets put there. The second instance, 20 pixels over the third instance 20 pixels from there so based on the instance number it's going to be moved over slight to the right the top position is going to be based on the event row and the event column the width that i'm just going to set seven columns i don't know why i set that it just seemed fine it's good so i set seven columns so that kind of squeezed in everything so seven it just turned out to be seven columns so we're just adding those seven columns so the width is basically based on a range it's based on that first column based on seven columns over. So the width of seven columns. So it's like this, the width of this. So whatever the width of that is, is the width of our shape. All right, great. So we're giving it a very specific height. The height's gonna be based on the row. I guess I was gonna do minus one, but that's nah, fine. Actually, we probably should do slightly minus two. It's kind of overlapping a little bit. You see that? Uh, I'll keep it the same because I don't think we're gonna be able to, let's try to refresh it. No, I think our text is gonna be hidden because I've, yeah. So you see minus two, it can't quite do that. We kind of need the height there. Keep the height, not subtract anything. We wanna add some text 
in there. And that text, of course, is now that we've put it all in a string variable, I just refreshed it. And so it's going to be that event text that's going to go in the text frame, text range, and text. So the text inside the shape. Perfect. The impact color, as long as it's not empty, we are going to set the shape color to fill for color. RGB, that impact color, whatever color we've set that. And we're going to run a macro to that. And macro is called calendar event select. That macro we're going to run next. So turn on application screen updating. So calendar event select. When I select it, what do I want to happen? I want to go to the website. So we see that we've got the website here. That is the URL that we saved inside the database. It's going to go to where? It's going to go to whatever URL we have inside our main database located right here in column J. So all I need is the row that's associated with, and I know the link is on column J. So to do that, we're going to set the event ID. Now we know I can extract the event ID. How do I know the event ID? If I remove the text cal event, what's it going to leave me with? It's going to leave me with that event ID. If I know the event ID and I use the find inside our unique IDs, I can find it very, very easily. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The event ID, oh, I put it in B2. There's a few different ways. I'm going to use the max. So let's pull that up here. I'm going to unhide this here and we're going to take a look. I'm going to put that, I'm going to rename this. This is obviously not, it's got an event database row. This is the event ID, not appointment. So event ID. So I'm going to put that event ID directly inside B2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the database row using the match formula of whatever's in B2 and the event ID. And I'm not using this in this training. We're using VBA to generate it. But if we were, we would use the max formula here for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a row here. If the row was found, the database row, then I know what row. If I know what row and I know what column, I can extract that link. So if we enter that event ID in B2 and B3 is empty, we have an incorrect event. If B3 is not empty, I'm going to take that row and I'm going to put it in a long variable called current event row. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this workbook, follow hyperlink, and where's that hyperlink is located in column J and the event row. So that's going to go to the website. So that's easy. So now all we need to do when we make a selection, it's simply select it and it's going to go directly to that website. Very, very cool and very, very easy. Very good. We can hide these columns now. We've gone over everything inside that. The last thing that I want to show you before I let you go is previous day, next day, and refresh is obviously just running the same macro again. So it's relatively easy just to refresh the calendar. Previous day, today, and next day, very easily, all we need to do is change what's in B5. Previous day, B5 is going to be whatever's in there, minus one, and then we're going to refresh the calendar. The next day is simple equal to plus one, adding a day to whatever's in B5. And today, simply we're taking the current date and we're putting it directly inside B5 and refreshing the calendar. Wow, this has been a really cool training. I do appreciate your continued support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and comment below. I love each and every one of your comments. I've got incredible applications. Check my website for new courses, new products, Really lots of cool stuff going on there. And we'll see you on Patreon next week. And I'd love to hear from your ideas. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week.